Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to 2022. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can use Firestore and Clerk together to create a recipe app. This video is not going to be a UI tutorial. In fact, I'm gonna give you the whole UI. All you have to do is focus on Firestore and Clerk. So by the end of the video, you'll understand how to protect routes, how to insert, add, and read data from Firestore. Now, before we get started, just a couple of things. Firstly, we have a Discord. Click the link in the description and join other like-minded Jamstack and web developers learning to code. We talk about all sorts of things such as JavaScript, Next.js. We also talk about video games, one of my favorite pastimes. So if you're interested, click the link in the description. Also, if you're new here, make sure you're subscribed. There's gonna be plenty of crash courses in 2022. But before we start coding, let's see what we're gonna build and then let's get into it. To begin with, we're going to start by looking at Firebase. If you've never created a Firebase project before, this is what happens when you log in for the first time. It's going to ask you to add a project, or if you have an existing project, you can select that too. So we're gonna select add project here, and you can give your project a name. So let's give it a name, recipe app, and click continue, and then select whether or not you want Google Analytics. We'll turn it off for this project. And it's going to create our project and set up the basics. So we'll wait for this to happen and then we'll come back. So now our project is ready. We can click continue here and it will load us into our Firebase application dashboard. And we need to do a few things. So first we need to set up our authentication so that we can use Clerk to handle authentication. So when you click this, it's going to say get started. So click that. So now you have this sign in page, you can go ahead and leave everything alone here, it is all set up. What's important to remember is if you happen to deploy this out, you will have to add an authorized domain here, but localhost is set up by default. Secondly, we want to set up a database. So we're going to use this Firestore database to do this. And this is allows you to do real time updates, super powerful queries, and it scales automatically as data gets added. So you're gonna click create database here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this in test mode for now. And then you go ahead and click next. And then you're going to select whatever the cloud Firestore location works best for you. So in this example, I have it set to US Central, but make sure you select the one that works for you. If you're in Europe, you might want Europe West. Um, and then click enable. So now that is enabled, what will happen now is it will provision the cloud store and then we can talk about how data gets added. So now our database has been provisioned, we now really need a set of rules. Although these rules here state that we can read and write until a certain date, we really just wanna protect our cloud store. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna just set a few different rules. So instead of having these here, we're going to change the rules to allow users that aren't logged in to read the data, but anyone has to be authenticated to write to our database. So to do that, we can do allow read if true. And that was basically state, hey, you can uh, read regardless to if you're authenticated or not. And then for writing, we can do allow write if request dot auth does not equal null. And that will state, as long as you have an authentication token of some nature, you'll be able to log in and write to our database. So if we publish these changes, we can actually quickly experiment with them. So technically our resource right now is here and the name is recipe app YouTube. 
but we need to start a collection first. So to start a collection, we just need to give it a collection ID. So let's give it recipes as the collection ID. And then we can add our first document ID here. I'm just going to add in this string and then a title that says test. And this is just to make sure that our rules work as we expect them to. So now if we go to rules, we can click this rules playground and say get and then slash databases slash recipes and hit run. And you should get simulated read aloud. And then if we try and do a write, so create, it says simulate and write denied. So now we know that it's set up ready for when our users need to be authenticated to either create or update a recipe but they can navigate to the application without having to be authenticated and see what kind of recipes there are. So now our Firestore Firebase is set up and authentication is ready to go. We do need one more thing from Firebase before we move on to Clerk. So click this cogwheel here, click Project Settings, click Service Accounts, and then click Create New Private Key. And then click Generate Key, and you'll download a JSON file down here. Now we need to go to Clerk to set up Firebase integration and we can use this JSON to speed it up. So I've logged into Clerk and I'm at my dashboard. I'm gonna click a new application here and I'm going to say recipe app. And I'm gonna turn off social logins but it's up to you if you wanna add those or not, but that's for a separate video. Click Add Application, and then we're going to go down to Integrations here, select Firebase, and it's gonna say, we need all this information. So what we can do is click Upload JSON, insert that JSON, and hit Apply Changes. Now, everything is set up, ready for us to be able to use uh, the admin SDK as we see fit. So now we have that, we also just need some information from Clerk to allow this to work the way we want. So when you click this home button here, you'll have a quick reference section here. You're going to need this front end API key to handle all of our authentication and the setup for Clerk. So go ahead and click copy here and we'll meet you in Visual Studio Code where we start to code our application. Welcome to Visual Studio Code and our application. So before we do anything else, I want to just give a quick tour of the code and kind of what to expect as we go through this application. So let's start with our index.js. Currently we have this use state that takes in a JSON of four different recipes. And each recipe has an ID, title, description, ingredients, instructions, an image, category, prep time, cook time, servings, and the calories. We're going to use this to power our recipe card. Now our recipe card just takes in those items and displays a card as you saw in the intro video. We then have the ability to click this button here that goes to recipes and ID. Now this recipe ID is a dynamic path, so it's built on top of get static props and get static paths. We're going to be using both of those with Firebase as well. And this allows us to have a fast site that doesn't require us to keep looking at database objects to figure out which one of these is the right one. When you click this, it brings up a bigger card that shows the application. We then have two forms for add and edit. The add one just takes a form and the edit also takes the same form except from we just update it based upon what's passed to it. So that's the basic code and the basic understanding. We now need to essentially add in our clerk and tell it which pages are public and which ones are not. And we also need to add Firebase using 9.6. So first, let's install our required packages. So you can do yarn add Firebase, and we're also gonna do at clerk slash next.js. Once both of those have installed, I'll meet you back here and we can talk about our next steps. 
So now Clerk and Firebase have been installed, the first thing we want to do is add Clerk as the provider to wrap our application and only allow specific pages to be accessed by the public and the rest to be locked down by logins. So first we want to import Clerk provider. We also need signed in, signed out, and redirect to sign in. And those come from at clerk slash nextjs. Then we're going to tell it what are our public pages. So we can do const public pages equals, and there's going to be two sets of pages here that we actually want to show. Those two pages are the recipe page when someone clicks a recipe, as well as the home page that allows you to see all of the recipes on screen. So to do that, we're going to do a slash here, and then for the recipes, it is a dynamic route, so we're actually going to tell it that we want slash recipes, slash, and then the square brackets and the ID like so. This means that it will load any pages that come from that recipes and ID, allowing us, regardless to how many pages we have, as long as it's on that route, it will always allow us to access it. We now need to import use router, and that's from Next.js, and this will allow us to essentially check to see what page we're on and handle it as expected. So now we have that, we can come down into this part of our application and start telling it what we want to do. So we can do const path name and set that equal to use router. Then we can say const is public page equal to public pages dot includes path name. So what's doing here is saying, if this path name is inside of here, we can go ahead and allow that as a public page. Otherwise, it is not a public page. We can then wrap our whole application here in a clerk provider. So we do clerk provider. And inside of here is where we can do our if else statement that denotes whether or not it's a public page and what we should do. So. Inside of here, we can do is public page, and then a question mark, and then if it is, what we want to do is return this nav and this components.props. So we can just drop that inside of here, and then if it isn't a public page, we then need to ask ourselves, are they signed in or not? So inside of here, we can do signed in, and if so, we can drop the same nav and component. Otherwise, we want them to be redirected. So we can say signed out and then redirect to sign in. So there we have it. We have clerk integration. Now make sure that you add your .env.local and inside of there, it has your next public clerk front end API, which was on the dashboard. Just go ahead and drop that in and then let's launch the application and make sure all of our pages are protected as expected. So we've launched the application and you can see our recipes are here. And if we click this add recipe button, it redirects us to the sign in page for us to sign up and create an account. So now we have protection, we can actually start creating our Firebase integration and using that to power this application. So now we have Clerk, we want to essentially use Firebase to do all of our database work. So what we can do here is create a Firebase.js file inside the root of our application and we can start working with Firebase. So first we're going to import something called initialize app. And this allows us to initialize our Firebase application using a configuration. So we can do initialize app from Firebase slash app. 
And we're also going to get Firestore, which allows us to use the database for our application. And we can do that by doing Firebase slash Firestore. And we're going to use the light version, so we only need the dependencies and we keep it nice and lightweight. I'm gonna create a const here called Firebase config. And I'm not gonna put anything in just yet. I'm then gonna create another const here called app, a const called database, and then an export called database. So the reason I haven't filled this out is because we need to find something in our Firebase dashboard to allow this to work. So inside of our Firebase, Select, make sure you're selected to the right application. You're going to click the cogwheel, click project settings, scroll down and you'll see this Firebase configuration. So go ahead and copy that and drop that in to our application here. And then to do the app part, we do equals initialize app and then Firebase config. And for the database, all we have to do is click equals, get Firestore, and then the app. So that will initialize our Firebase application so we can use that anywhere in our app. And it also give us access to a database anywhere in our application, such as the client side or the server side to allow us to do the work that we expect. So now we've set up Firestore and we've set up Clerk, we can actually start working on our pages. I think the most important one would be our index page, which will allow us to grab data from the database and fill in our recipe cards. And it will show us how to do one without actually needing authentication. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete this data out. Then we're going to use state and we're going to use use effect to power this page using Firebase. So we already have use state, so we can just hit a comma here and then do use effect. And then underneath that, we're also going to need a few pieces from Firebase. So we're going to need a collection and also get docs. And those come from Firebase slash Firestore slash light. And then we're also going to import that database that we exported from Firebase. So it's dot dot slash and then Firebase. And this will give us access to the database. And these two helpers here will allow us to get documents or whatever we need and show them to the user. Because this page is already built around recipes, we can use use state and use effect together in harmony to create essentially a automatically updating application regardless to how many people start adding things. So to do that, we can do a const here, recipes, and then set recipes equal to use state. And we'll set that to an empty array. Then we can use use effect. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make an asynchronous call inside of use effect to essentially grab the data from our database and then push that down to our application. And then we can display as we see fit. So the way that this works is you're going to use use effect and then we're going to do async function get recipes we're going to then do a const here called recipe collection and that's going to equal collection which is our helper here from Firestore. We're going to put database here, which will allow us to use the database that Firebase has. Then we're going to put a comma and then recipes. We're then going to do a snapshot of what the current recipe collection is. So I'm just going to call this recipe snapshot. And we're going to equal that to await get docs. So we're going to ask it to get the documents for this collection. So we can just put recipe collection. Then we're going to do const recipes equals recipe snapshot. So this snapshot here, dot docs, and then we're going to map over those. So doc, and then we're going to say const 
data equals doc dot data. So we're essentially saying get us the data from this document. Data dot ID is equal to doc dot ID return data. Now let's just describe what's happening here before I move on to any other part of this use effect. So essentially what we're doing is we're making this call to the get docs and then we're going to map over them, get the data and set the data ID equal to the doc ID. So the doc ID is essentially an auto generated ID and we want to make sure that we have that in the correct spot. So data ID equals doc ID and that will allow us to have that on top of all the rest of our doc data. Otherwise, this is not returned as part of the data fields. So we're essentially saying, give us this as another data field so we can use it in the future. Then what we need to do is say set recipes equal to recipes. And then the final part is to say get recipes. So we're actually going to call this asynchronous function inside a use effect and then put a comma here and then put our set of square braces so that this doesn't continuously run. Then all we need to do is return this function down here and then we're good to go. So let's just go over this one more time before we launch our application to see it in practice. What we're saying is we need a use state that holds the recipes. We're then going to make a call to our Firebase application. We're going to find the database, which is the one that we have set up in our Firebase here. And we're going to be looking for the recipe collection. We're then going to get all of those docs and I'm calling it a snapshot because we're going to iterate over it. We're then gonna create this recipes and we're going to iterate over all the docs inside of this snapshot. We're then going to find all the data for each document and set a new ID equal to the document ID as it is not available as a data point. We're then gonna return that data and set it to our state up here. And then we're going to make that call so that it actually fires. And then we're going to return those in a grid. So now this should be good to go. And if we launch our application, what we should see is a recipe app with two elements in it, which I previously added to our database. So I've launched the application and now we have these two instead of four because I previously inserted them into the database. Now the way it works for the insert is you can use just the UI to do it and you put each one of the JSONs that were previously available into the slot until you've completed it. And I'll make sure that I leave a JSON file so that you can add those as you see fit. So now we've done this, we wanna go ahead and start working on the next stage, which is to edit our recipes dynamic paths to use the ones from Firebase instead of the default ones that I created for JSONs. So let's go ahead and start working on those. So I'm inside the dynamic recipes id.js file, which you can find in your pages, recipes and id.js. So inside of here, we need to add some stuff from Firebase to be able to retrieve those pieces of information. So we're going to use a few different things here. We're going to use collections, get docs, get doc and doc from Firebase slash Firestore slash Lite. And we're also going to need our database, which is of course from our Firebase file that we created, which is in our root. So that's dot dot slash dot dot slash Firebase. And that should give us everything that we need to make this work as expected. And we don't actually need to make any changes in this function code here. What we do need to do is make changes all the way down here in this get static props and get static paths. So to begin with, we'll start with get static paths. Now, if you've never used dynamic routing before, the way this works is it's going to go ahead and get all of the routes for a particular API call or whatever you're using and dynamically create them. 
And then it's going to give you the ability to get the props as you build to do the rest. So this page is going to be entirely static and be super fast for your users. So to begin with, let's talk about get static paths. So I've gone ahead and deleted all of the data out from here. And let's start building our get static paths. So to begin with, we need to do const and we're going to do recipe collection equal to collection database comma recipes. Now this may look very familiar to the last one that we wrote and you'd be right, this is almost exactly the same as the last one we wrote. Snapshot equals await get docs and we're going to pass in the recipe collection. We're then going to create recipes and we're going to say equals recipe snapshot docs dot map doc and then const data equals doc dot data data dot id equals doc dot id return data so that gives us our actual recipes and the data that we might need which is exactly the same as the one we just previously wrote, but now we need to do a bit more. So we're going to do const paths equals recipes dot map. And then we're going to iterate over each recipe that we could potentially have. And inside of here, we're going to say params ID recipe dot ID. And then return paths and then we're going to do fallback false. At this point, this will now build, every time we build this application, it will go out and build every single one of these dynamic pages, allowing us to have super fast ability to do work. So now we have that, now we need to do our get static props. So Previously, we just had this giant JSON file that's powered all of this, but now we're going to create a different version that uses our Firebase. So we can go ahead and delete all of this out, but we can leave this params.id. We're going to use that to retrieve a single document from our Firebase application. So to do that, we do const recipe snapshot equal to await get doc. So get a single doc. We're going to tell it it's a doc and we need the database, the recipes. So our collection is recipes and then comma ID. So here what we're saying is get this doc. This doc is going to be our database collection with this ID. Then const recipe equals recipe snapshot dot data recipe.id equal to recipe snapshot.id. Then we can do our return statement and say return props recipe. And that's all the changes we need to do to make this work the way that we want. And it allows us to essentially say, hey, every time you build this application, go ahead and go to Firebase and grab all of the recipes we could possibly have and pass those down as properties. And then anytime a person clicks on that page, they'll get routed to this page and it will allow us to show the full recipe to the user. So let's go ahead and test that. And then we'll see if that works. And then we'll start working on how we're going to handle updates and ads from our database. So I did make a quick mistake here. You can see in our get static paths, I did collection, and this is actually correct, but the import at the top is incorrect. So if we go here and go to the top and change it from collection to collections, and I also noticed this doc.data should have these braces. So when you hit save now, and we go back to the page and refresh, we should have our recipe, in all glory with an edit button ready to go. So now we have the ability to grab all of our data from the database. We've also been able to power our recipe dynamic paths and depending on which one we select. So if we go back to home and click crab rolls, 
That will bring a different recipe up on the screen. So now we have those dynamic paths. Now we really need to work on the more complicated pieces of our plan, which is the add recipe and the edit recipe. So let's begin with add recipe. So we're inside our add recipe page here, and we're going to start working on allowing us to insert a new document into our database. So from here, we're actually going to use a variety of things. First, we're going to use something from Clerk called use user, which will allow us to get the current user that is logged in. We're also going to use something called sign in with custom token, get auth, collections, get doc, add doc from Firebase. So let's make sure that those are all imported at the top. So we need to import use user from at clerk slash next.js. We're going to import get auth and then sign in with custom token. And that's coming from Firebase slash auth. We're going to import collection, get docs, add doc from Firebase slash Firestore slash light. And finally, we need to import our database connection, which comes from dot dot slash Firebase. So now we have all of this, we can actually work on a single item in this whole form. We have this form here that has on submit, and we're going to change the way that this works to handle submitting to Firebase. So what we're going to do here is instead of having this console.log, we're going to do handle submit, and this will allow us to handle submits. Then we can create our handle submit underneath our handle change here. So the way that handle submits going to work is we're going to do a few things. Firstly, we're going to create a Firebase token as part of our clerk authentication here. So before we do anything else, inside of our function here, we need to do const user equals use user. And this will give us the ability to access any part of the user we might need from clerk when they're signed in. Then from here, we can create something called a Firebase clerk token. So to do that, we can do const Firebase clerk token equals await user get token and then Firebase. So what we're doing here is this get token is a promise that allows us to essentially use any of Clark's integrations. So this could be changed to uh, Hazura or Bubble or the webhook option they have, but we're using Firebase. So that'll create a custom token for Firebase. Then we could do const auth equals get auth. And the get auth is coming from Firebase. And this returns an auth instance and allows us to do anything with auth that we might need. Then what we're going to do is await sign in with custom token, which is what we imported at the top. We're going to pass in the auth and then that Firebase clerk token. So at this point, what we're actually doing is saying, hey, go ahead and sign in. And now we have this custom token. We can actually start adding in recipes and Firebase knows that we're authenticated and we can update to the database. So what we're going to do here is say const result equals await add doc. So we're going to add a doc to the collection known as database comma recipes and then we're going to pass in the recipe now the recipe is this use state here which allows the user to type in whatever they feel like so we have that then all we need to do is set the recipe back to empty states as a way to start the process over if they want to add multiple recipes and that is everything that we need to do. Now, obviously this is going to succeed because of the way that it's built, but you would wanna handle 
errors, etc., using dot then or dot catch. But we're not going to do that in this example. But we know that this is going to work, so we're just going to set the recipe back, assuming that Firebase is not down. But you should be able to error handle however you so please. So let's launch the application and try adding one and see if it shows up in our Firebase instance. So we're back in our application. We're gonna click add recipe here and it's gonna force us to sign in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. If you're not using uh, an account you've already created, click sign up here and then fill in the information. But we already did that to speed things along. Now if we click add recipe, we should be able to come to the screen and start typing in whatever we want. So let's do one on pizza and we'll just type in uh, lorem.pixum and the description will say taste just like the Italians wanted. Ingredients, we'll do crust, comma, sauce, comma, cheese, and we'll do that. And then for the instructions, we'll do add sauce to crust, add cheese on top, bake, enjoy. And then cook time, 20 minutes, five servings, 500 calories, category will be Italian, and prep time, five minutes. When we hit submit here, that on submit will handle it and check to see if we have a valid user, create a token for Firebase, update the database, and then give us our recipe. So as you can see, it has cleared out that page. So let's check our Firebase instance and see if we got a new recipe added to our database. So I've launched our Firestore instance, and as you can see, here it is, 500 calories, Italian, 20 minute cook time, tastes just like the Italians wanted. Here's an image, ingredients, etc., etc. So now we have the ability to create, we've had the ability to read. The last part is we really want to be able to update our application in case someone screwed up a recipe and they're like, oh no, it's actually a 25 minute cook time, or oh, it needs an extra ingredient, etc., etc. So let's start working on that. And we're gonna work in two pieces for this. First, we're going to do the get the data from the database. And then secondly, will be our insert and update. So we're inside of the edit recipe page and we're going to delete everything from this line 81 all the way up to line 20. So we need to import everything we need to make this work. So for the imports from Firestore, we're going to use get doc doc and update doc. And those are all gonna come from Firebase slash Firestore slash light. We're also going to import our database so we can use that. And that's gonna come from Firebase. And then we're also going to need use user so we can get our user to make sure they're authenticated to update. And that's gonna come from clerk next.js. And we're also gonna add a use effect here. So use effect. And then we also need import get auth and sign in with custom token. And that's coming from Firebase slash auth. So now we have all of the imports. We can hit save here and then we can start working down in our application. So the way this is gonna work is we're going to use this ID from our router query that we're passing along, and we're going to use that to get the specific document that we want, and we're going to set our use state to that. Then, once we fetch that data, we're going to populate the form. Now, that's already handled previously, but that's the at least the idea behind what we're doing here. So. First we need a state, so we can say const recipe comma set recipe equal to use state. Then we're going to use use effect, so use effect. And inside of our use effect, we're going to do another async function that says fetch data. 
And then inside of here is where we're going to fetch the data that we need from use effect. Then we're going to fetch the data, so actually make this call. And finally, what we want to do here is we actually want to make sure that the app only runs this once, depending on the ID. So we can pass it in, instead of an empty uh, square braces here, we can actually make sure it's based upon this ID. Now we need to make our call to the database. So with this, we're going to do a recipe snapshot. And we're going to say await get doc. And then we're going to do doc. So we're saying get this document. And it is a type of document reference where the database is the database that we've imported at the top. The collections is recipes. And this is an ID. We're then going to do const recipe equals recipe snapshot dot data. Then we'll just set the recipe ID equal to the recipe snapshot dot ID as we have previously. And then we're going to set recipe equal to recipe. And then we're going to hit save here. So now we're handling the essentially loading of data based upon when someone joins. So what we should do now is test to make sure this actually works. So I'll meet you back in the application and we'll make sure that we can edit successfully. So I've launched the application and I'm gonna click this pizza one here, which has a picture of hot dogs, click edit recipe. And as you can see, all the data fields are already previously filled out with all the data that we might need. So we know that part works. But when we click submit here, nothing happens. And we want to be able to update that based upon when someone clicks the submit button. So let's work on that. The final piece that is puzzle, submitting our work to Firestore. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this console.log to handle submit. And then we're going to create a new const here called handle submit. And this is where we're going to do our asynchronous function as we did with our create. But first, we want to import a few things. First, we need to import use user so that we can use that to create our token again to make sure that we are an authenticated user. And they obviously can create an insert and write to our database. So now we have this user, we can use that to create our handle submit. And similarly, just as we did before, we're going to create the clerk token, and then we're going to use that to create our updates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull this part out and copy it and paste it into our edit recipe here, because we're going to use this and it's exactly the same as the previous one we wrote. I'm also gonna delete that equals out. So now we have this, all we need to do is do our update. So the way this works is we do equal to await, update doc, which we imported at the top. Again, we're going to use this doc, which is a document reference, database, comma, recipes, which is our collection, and then the ID that we wanted to use, which is coming through from router. And then finally, on the outside here, we're going to write the word recipe, and then hit save. And now what should happen is, is we should be able to update our recipes, and then what I would do here is do a router.push and push us back to the home page where the user can be happy knowing that they've updated a recipe. So let's go and test out the final piece to our recipe application. So here we are in our edit recipe and I'm gonna change the title from pizza to deep dish pizza. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. And then as you can see here, this has already changed to deep dish pizza and we successfully edited our Firestore information. There you have it guys, a recipe app with Clerk and Firebase. I really hope you enjoyed the first video of 2022. And if you did, make sure to drop it a like, comment on more videos you wanna see in the future. And if you aren't subscribed, subscribe to this channel as I'll be doing more crash courses throughout the year. Until next time, see ya.